Good morning, and a warm welcome to Abbey Hill Church this morning, especially to any visitors we have worshipping with us this morning. Um, a special welcome to Hazel, Hazel Etherden, a friend of mine whom I will be mentioning a little later on. And also, I see another friend of mine at the back, Pat. So, <laughs> would you, your first visit, Pat? Not first, but, but yes. My name is Jane Wood Scowan, and I am a member of the Abbey Hill Worship Leaders Group. Now, we have a, a new member for today, Lottie Todd, who, and Lottie is going to be helping me with quite a bit of the service this morning. So, uh, thank you, Lottie. The church is looking good, isn't it, as she gets dressed up for Christmas. We have the wonderful Christmas tree. Thank you, Ivan, for putting it up, and thank you, Anne and Fred, for the lovely decorations. The Christmas banner is resplendent, always one of my favourites. And our flower group have arranged the Christmas flowers, which look, again, gorgeous. Thank you to everybody involved. This morning is Advent Sunday, the first week of the four in the Advent season as we lead up to Christmas Day. We have our Advent candles, again beautifully decorated by the flower group, and each week we will light one of the four red candles representing hope, peace, love and joy. So this week we light the first candle of hope. Hope that as we travel through this period of waiting, we will be open to the coming of the Spirit into our lives. And as we sing our first hymn this morning, the Todd family, not just Lottie, but Martin and Bronwyn as well, will come and light our candle of hope. And the hymn we will sing is number 295 in Rejoice and Sing, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Thank you, Lottie, and thank you, Martin and Bronwyn. Let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. God of surprises, thank you for this season of Advent, a season of waiting and watching. We look forward to Christmas and all of the celebrations, the presents, the mince pies, and the visit of Father Christmas. But most of all, we look forward to hearing again the story of the birth of baby Jesus, whose life and teachings are the greatest gifts of all. God of love, we come to you just as we are this morning. We know that so often we don't live up to being the best sort of people you want us to be, 
and that we know we can be. We're sorry for the mistakes we have made in the past week. Help us to be aware of your forgiving presence, knowing that as we remember our mistakes, they will be wiped away and we can start afresh. Open our hearts this morning so that we may have a deeper understanding of this Advent season and a fuller experience of your love. Amen. And we'll now say the family prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us for evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen and now i've got a little story for lottie There we are. How's that? <laughs> but you might enjoy it as well. <laughs> it's a story about a school Christmas performance of the Nativity play. Are you in one, Lottie? Are you going to do a Nativity play at school? Yeah. And who are you? I'm an angel. You're an angel. Wonderful. Lovely. Now, most of us know that story of Mary and Joseph traveling to Bethlehem and a baby Jesus being born in the stable and the angels and shepherds and the three wise men. But there is another old folk tale around this story which tells a little bit more about the journey of the three wise men. And it goes like this. When they were on their way to Bethlehem, they stayed overnight at the home of a village girl called Babushka. And before leaving the next morning, they asked her if she would like to go with them to see the baby Jesus. I can't, she said, I'm too busy. But once they had gone, she changed her mind and set off for Bethlehem, only to find Lottie an empty stable. She was too late, and Mary, Joseph and the baby had moved on to Egypt. Well, that's how this story that the school were performing should have gone. On the day of the dress rehearsal, Matthew, one of the boys in the play taking the part of Joseph, was being teased by the three boys who were taking the parts of the three wise men. These three friends, Raju, Jason and Keith, were teasing him saying, Hey Matthew, what's it like to be married? And Matthew, your wife needs you. And even, Matthew, your wife wants to hold your hand. Now, we all know it's not very nice to tease your friends, but that's what these three were doing, and Matthew found it very annoying. Instead of just pointing out to them that as Joseph, he had the three wise men kneeling at his feet, he said, I hate girls, and I hate you too, and I'm never going to play with you again. Well, the next day was the day of the performance. By 10 o'clock... The assembly hall was full, just like this, of parents, and Matthew's teacher was reminding him what he had to do. Remember, she said, you come in in scene two. You stand behind the manger, beside Mary, whose real name was Megan. You wait until the wise men bring their gifts, then you take Mary's hand and lead her and the baby Jesus off to Egypt. Matthew scowled. He still didn't want to be Joseph, and he still felt as if he hated the wise men. Well, the play got underway, and scene one, where the wise men stayed overnight with Babushka, went smoothly. Then came scene two. Grimly, Matthew trudged on stage with Mary and stood by her side. The wise men came, knelt before the manger, and Matthew snatched their gifts. As they got up, he let his mind wander, until suddenly Megan nudged him. Move, she said. Whoops, he woke up to the fact that he should have left for Egypt five seconds ago. And his teacher hissed, hurry up. Well, no sooner had they reached the wings when there was a bit of a fuss. Oh no, gasped Megan, and tried to dash back on the stage. 
You can't go back, the teacher said. The whole audience will notice. Notice what, thought Matthew. He glanced over his shoulder and found the answer. Disaster. They'd forgotten baby Jesus. He was still in the manger. Now, scene three was the scene where Babushka was supposed to reach Bethlehem too late to see baby Jesus. The trouble was that thanks to Matthew and Megan, she wasn't too late. Baby Jesus was still there, plain to see, lying in the manger. And Matthew could see, just like you did, the parents in the first few rows all trying not to laugh. Now, right in the middle of the very front row was the vicar. He said the closing prayer, and he came backstage where Megan was crying. I'd have remembered Jesus if I hadn't had to tell Matthew to leave, she said. And you can imagine Matthew's feelings, and he expected more teasing. But the vicar had more sense. I loved the way you left the doll in the manger, he said. Your baby Jesus, waiting for Babushka, reminded me that God is very patient and waits for us too. Well, these words made everyone feel better. Megan cheered up, and Matthew calmed down. He liked the sound of this God, a God who gives second chances, who isn't rushing to say you're too late. And then another thought struck him, Lottie. There was something this patient God was waiting for him to do. Megan slipped off all smiles because forgetting baby Jesus had been so clever. And Matthew ran into the playground to make friends again with the wise men because it's never too late to do the right thing. And that's the end of the story. But it's not the end of everything because we're now going to have a short prayer which Lottie is going to read to us. You hold that quite close to your mouth. Yeah. Loving God, thank you for your love for us and for your patience. Thank you for giving us second chances. We know that we don't always do and say the right things, but we know it is never too late to put things right. So help us to be loving and kind to one another. Help us to avoid the temptation to tease our friends and thank you for knowing that you will always love us. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Lottie. That was lovely. Right, do you want to go and join Mummy and Daddy? You want to stay here? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. Well, we're going to sing our second hymn, and it's number 141 in Rejoice and Sing. Make way, make way.
Now Lottie, with the help of Pete and Joe, is going to take the collection. We bring you the ordinary things of life, notes and coins, and with them we bring ourselves, take us and our gifts of money to do your work in the world. What do they say? <laughs> now, um, I mentioned earlier that we do have a very special lady with us today, Hazel Etherden. Now, many of us know Hazel, and more of us will also remember Alan, Hazel's husband, who sadly died on the 27th of October. Now, Hazel and Alan have a strong connection with Abbey Hill. They were married here in 1990 by Donald Horsfield and Donald had a lovely tradition of getting together the couples he had married and so my late husband Brian and I came to know Hazel and Alan over dinner at Donald and Harrow's and so started more than 30 years of friendship. Alan, as many of you will know, was a truly gifted musician, a pianist, and a kind and skilled teacher. In fact, I know this because another connection is that Alan taught my stepdaughter, Zanna, to play the piano, a gift from Alan which she will have for life. And when our own organist, Bob, was unable to play for our Sunday worship, we do let him have a holiday now and then, Alan would often step in to play for us. Alan also gave of his time and talents to generously put on a fundraising concert here at Abbey Hill, he on the piano, together with a soprano friend. A wonderful evening. And even more than that, Alan was a wonderful person, a great friend, a lovely husband, and an all-round good guy. Another connection between Hazel and, and me is that Hazel joined the Kenilworth Sir Optimist Club and so our friendship, along with that of fellow members, Bronwyn and Barbara, continues. Alan's funeral took place at Oakley Wood on the 16th of November, which was a wonderful occasion of special words and music. But Hazel also very much wanted to have Abbey Hill as part of her saying goodbye to Alan. And so we are remembering him here today, and we'll now have the pleasure of hearing Alan play a short piece called Poem by Zdenko Vibic.
Thank you, Alan, and thank you, Hazel, for sharing with us this morning. There are a few notices this morning. Um, the first one, Joe has asked me to let you know that the copies of Reform are at the back of church, so um, please take them with you when you go. Um, and Anne Banning has a notice for us. Um, Queen's Road Baptist Church in Coventry are opening their doors again this year to the homeless from Christmas Eve for five days. Um, normally the spare rooms and corridors are full of mattresses and blankets, but this year due to COVID restrictions, there's no sleepovers. So I'll be collecting uh, food and toiletries on Thursday the 23rd of December from 9.30 onwards here. Can you please make sure that there's a sell-by date of the 29th of December on them because everything gets piled on the floor. Stacks of stuff gets dished out over the five days and I think it's really great if we can donate Okay, that's Thursday the 23rd of December. I'll be taking it Christmas Eve. Thank you. Great. Now, I think we also have John Nichols and Betty, so if you want to. Yeah. Well, it's been quite a week when I heard that the cottage was closed and we booked it. So I had to quickly do something, and we're now going to the tilt yard um, on um, the same day, same time, um, and I have got leaflets for anybody who has, I, well, would still like to go, but I will need to know quite quickly. It's slightly dearer if you have two courses, there isn't much of it, um, and um, well, everybody's welcome, but we're now at the tilt yard. Thank you. Just in case anybody wasn't here last week, it's just a reminder that the, the Abbey Hill Theatre Group is up and running again. Uh, we're off to the pantomime on the 21st of December, which is Puss and Boots. Uh, tickets are £12. Uh, if you wish to go, either see me afterwards, ring me, email me, whatever, and I will sort the ticket out. Do remember, of course, it's not an exclusive club, we're not an exclusive bunch. So if you wanted to bring a friend, family, anybody, then just let me know and that'll be fine. Thanks. Well, we're up to about 30 so far, so it should be a good night. Well, that's lovely, isn't it? Now, in keeping with our theme of Advent and of waiting patiently, instead of a Bible reading this morning, I've chosen a poem called Leisure by W.H. Davis, which was also read at Alan's funeral and which encourages us just to take time and meditate with nature. And Pat is going to read it for us. This is a poem that you're all familiar with. What is this life if full of care? We have no time to stand and stare, no time to stand beneath the boughs and stare as long as sheep and cows, no time to see when woods we pass, where squirrels hide their nuts and grass, no time to see in broad daylight streams full of stars like star skies at night, no time to turn at beauty's glance and watch her feet, how they can dance. No time to wait her mouth, till her mouth can enrich the smile her eyes began. A poor life this, if full of care, we have no time to stand and stare.
Thank you, Pat. Now, did, did you I think Mummy wants you? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you very much, Lottie, though. I think we should give her a little clap for all she's done this time. And I dare say she will be running Lottie's Cafe at the end of church, so look out for that. Now, we all understand Lent. That's when we try to do without things. We give up sugar in tea, or we give up sweets or chocolate. And some of us give up being grumpy first thing in the morning. It's clear what Lent is about. But Advent, well, I don't really know, and I suspect that many of us are in the don't knows when it comes to Advent. We can buy Advent calendars, which have all sorts of things behind little windows. We have a busy time buying presents, wrapping, going to parties, making mince pies, a madly accelerating dash towards the big day. But what does Advent really mean? The word Advent comes from the Latin phrase ad venire, which means to come towards. Coming towards Christmas, coming towards a new year, and it's also a coming toward the rest of our life. Because Advent can be a time when we think about the sort of person we want to be. And it's a time when the coming of God's Spirit can influence us through the Christmas story to be the kind of person we want to be and that God wants us to be. It can be a time of mixed emotions. We're coming to the end of another year. For some, it's been a year of happiness. For others, a year of sad events. A year when we made progress. Or perhaps a year when we didn't achieve everything we wanted to in our lives. Advent is, above all, a time of coming towards the changes we would like to make. A time of new beginnings. A time of new chances. And a time of new choices. Because underneath Advent is God's promise, a promise to be part of, to give us the peace and fulfilment that we all long for. The tradition of holding a midwinter celebration is much older than Christianity. Almost all of the ancient people held a festival around the winter solstice, December the 22nd, to celebrate and encourage the return of the sun. In ancient Rome, the time from the 17th of December to the new year was devoted to Saturnalia, a time when presents were exchanged and there was riotous merrymaking. Servants changed places with their masters and a king was appointed to take charge of the celebrations. The birth of Christ was celebrated by early Christians as a festival but on dates as disparate as the 1st of January, the 6th of January, the 29th of March, and the 29th of September. In the 4th century, Pope Julius decided that Jesus' birthday should be celebrated on the 25th of December, already a day of special winter celebration. Probably the church decided that they couldn't suppress the Saturnalia celebration, so if you can't beat them, let's join them. And at the same time, Pope Julius ordered that the four weeks before Christmas should be a time of preparation, and it was he who called it Advent. Now, thinking of Advent as a time of the changes we would like to make, we know that underneath Advent is God's promise, a promise to be part of us, to give us the peace and fulfilment that we all long for. The trouble is that amidst all the noise and bustle of getting ready for Christmas, it's hard to concentrate on that promise and what it might mean for each one of us. So, how do we open up to this coming of the Spirit in this season of Advent? 
There's a chapel in Tewkesbury Cathedral full of candles and a simple notice saying, if you would like to pray but don't know how, just light a candle and watch it. In the quiet, believe that God's Spirit will be with you. And so we light our Advent candles in church and perhaps over the busy Christmas season, we can find a moment to be quiet. Maybe light a candle and in the quietness, let ourselves be open to the presence of God's Spirit entering our hearts. We don't have to use words or think about anything. Just be quiet and allow the Spirit of God to wrap around you. For all of us, this Advent season can be a new beginning, and that would be the best Christmas present of all. And we're going to sing again the hymn, Come Down, O Love Divine, number 294, in Rejoice and Sing. come to our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. In this season of Advent, we ask for the light of the Spirit to shine on us and show us the way. We pray for the Church and for all who are connected with the work of the Church. We ask that the teaching will be guided by the Spirit and that the hearts of those they teach will be open to hear your truth. We pray for our own United Reformed Church and for our church here on Abbey Hill and our Minister George. We pray for those places in the world which are caught up in conflict. We pray for those in positions of leadership and authority 
that they may be moved to realign their values and goals to reflect your justice and love. We pray especially for the situations in Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq, Somalia and the Middle East, and for all other places where homes and families are being destroyed. In this week in particular, we pray for those fleeing violence and persecution and seeking asylum here and in other countries. May justice, love and compassion be shown in finding a solution. We pray for our town of Kenilworth and for our fellowship at Abbey Hill. Bless our homes and families and all of our neighbours and friends. Help us in this season of Advent to listen to one another and to recognise one another's gifts. We pray for those who wait in darkness, those without hope. We ask that during this period of Advent, a glimmer of light will touch the souls of those who feel neglected or locked away in despair. We pray for your healing touch on those known to us who need strength and encouragement to move forwards. In a moment of quiet, we'll bring to mind those known who are in need of our prayers. And from our prayer book, we think especially of Hazel and family, of Joanne Dunning, of Frank, of Felicity, of Lee, who's just had a heart operation and we pray for a speedy recovery, for Winnie, for Rosemary Jones, and we give thanks that she has had her drain removed successfully. For David Gilmore, who's having a stressful time. And for the family of Sue, who died earlier this month. And now a moment of quiet. And finally, we pray for ourselves. Be with us as we travel through this Advent season, and may we all be open to your spirit coming into our lives. Amen. Our final hymn is number 135 in Rejoice and Sing. Joy to the world, the Saviour comes.
Martin, I wonder if you could just ask Lottie to come up with me for the blessing. I don't think she was very happy about that. <laughs> Thank you, Lottie. Will you just hold my hand while we do the blessing? Yeah. Gracious God, Go with us in our journey of life. And though we do not always recognize your presence or feel your nearness, walk close by our side, leading, supporting, encouraging, and providing until we lay down our burdens and enter your everlasting peace. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will be with us this day and evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> His cafe is now open. So. <laughs>